What's up, fight fans? Movie go is Jedi's and Sith. I'm Jay Cotto, the Boxing Jedi, and welcome to the Boxing and Jedi's Temple. And well, basically, man, we're gonna get to more uh, Keith Thurman fuckery. Um, piece of hybrid now five, and uh, you know, the Red Glove Militant. They dropped some videos, uh, and uh, if you haven't checked them out, if you're not subscribed, go check the brothers out. No doubt, hashtag come back to boxing. No doubt. Um, go check those guys out, man. The guys are crazy. Peace of my man Tommy Temper as well. And big boys boxing, no doubt. And my man Raph. You know what I'm saying? Raphael Dawkins. So uh you guys gotta check it out, man. You know, these videos are pretty cool. You know, they get they give nice uh in-depth breakdowns on Thurman's behavior. And me, well personally, you know how we do here, hashtag come back to boxing. You know how I do. So I'm just gonna basically uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk Keith Thurman down with this. And I'm gonna do it with his own words because, you know, a statement is a statement, right? And if you wanna hear it from the horse's mouth, this is exactly what we're gonna do. So, let's get into what Keith Thurman has said in this press conference. This trash talking, which is good. I mean, you know, but at, at the same time, looking at his performance, of his last fight and the way Josecito Lopez was able to get to him. So without any further ado, let's let's get into this shit, guys. You know what I mean? And peace to the new subscribers, peace to all the subscribers, peace to everybody that's following hashtag come back to boxing. We are soon going on fucking nine years in this motherfucker. Peace to you awesome guys, no doubt. But let's get into what fucking like my man Hybrid Nine Five says, run time Thurman says. And before I get into this, I, really fast, I just want to get, just want to say, I have all respect, you know, and and you know, and I still do. It's just, and I'll get into it afterwards. Let's let's get it. Yeah, at the age of seven, I put blood, sweat, and tears in this sport. I worked hard to be a champion. Uh, I've always wanted to fight some of the greatest names in the sport of boxing. Uh, years ago. You know, I wanted the Floyd Mayweather. I wanted Manny Pacquiao. Now, that's a fact. And I remember when when he wanted to fight Floyd and he was ranked number one for WBC. Then all of a sudden, uh, Floyd threw Errol Spence Jr. in front of him, right? And ever since then, everybody's been talking shit. So basically, yes, you Errol Spence Jr. fans are Flomos from that point. It transitioned. So there's there's a lot of fact behind this video, trust me. You know, um and a lot of history, you know. So so I was there. So um yeah, no lie, you wanted you wanted that fight. You wanted those fights at the time. And you still did. And you rightfully had a right to claim those fights. But then something went on. Let's continue. Floyd's gone, Pacquiao's here, and he wants the challenge. And I'm very grateful, very happy to be sharing the ring with a legend like Manny Pacquiao. Now, that's a humble statement. No doubt. You know, to recognize someone at that stature within your sport and in your era, especially. Now, from what I just said, in his era, especially in this era, Manny Pacquiao, the vet, still a threat. If you guys are really true to yourself and true to the sport and true to the truth the same way the truth is true to you you would understand exactly what I mean by that statement that I just said okay in this era which is not near Pacquiao's other two decades but let, let's let's but you know for those who know boxing and truly understand boxing history you know times change I believe boxing has come to a new era. Floyd is gone. Pacquiao is here. Come July 20th, he will disappear. Okay? He will disappear. He oh. announced him as a senator. He belongs as a senator in the Philippines. With all respect, he is a legend. He will always be remembered in the sport. But I'm doing to Manny Pacquiao what he did to Oscar De La Hoya. Okay, so... 
this is boxing rhetoric. This is all ranting. You know, this is selling tickets. You know, I can understand, you know, it's good for talking shit. But at the same time, now, these are personal words. These are things that this is where fight fans like myself, hardcore fans like myself, those that follow me, those that I follow. We have a problem with this now. Because now you're seeing something as to you are nowhere near this specimen that Oscar De La Hoya was, even in his prime. And even even in that fight with Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya just and I don't even think if he would have met Pacquiao in his prime, he would have been able to fuck with Pacquiao, because Pacquiao's just a whole different fucking different type of monster now. Okay? You've got to take a look at the dynamics of what Keith Thurman is saying and which is equaling to nothing but just a rant. He's not near the caliber of Oscar De La Hoya. You cannot push yourself. We have seen this. There's nothing. You're getting older. There's nothing more or nothing new that you're going to bring to the table. You're getting heavier. You're getting slower. You know, you're making more mistakes. You know, instead of taking not even an easy fight, but more tune-ups and putting more defenses rightfully and, and, you know, deservingly taking, if you want to call it easy fights, just to come back, we would understand because you've been out for almost two years. But now you want to, you know, okay, so you took this fight. So now you're saying this, that you, just like you promised a, a big beat down on Josecito and, and Josecito almost washed your shit. Made you look bad. Has nothing to do with he was the better man that night because if that was if that was the case, he would have won that fight, right? And he didn't. So it has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with the fact that you are not up to par with Manny Pacquiao. And I've been saying this for the longest. None of these guys are except for guys that are fighting hard and taking fights on a constant pace, which is like Terrence Crawford, you know, at 147, Terrence Crawford, even Sean Porter, rough and tough. So you're promising a performance where you say you're going to stop Pacquiao. Right? I'm not even going to throw Adrian Brown into the picture. But you guys don't understand that that undefeated shit, it really don't matter. And mark this down, or what I'm saying now, at 7.50. Right now. Mark this down. Manny Pacquiao... Is definitely going to Oreo stop it. Manny Pacquiao is definitely going to uh serve Keith Thurman an ass whipping. I keep saying it. Manny Pacquiao has seen these styles before. Eight divisions. He's seen all these styles before. The, you know, and it's just the, the the main factor that 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 Keith Thurman is not fighting at a level where he can promise us anything. You know what I mean? Everybody's saying, "Oh, Keith Thurman's going to outpoint Manny Pacquiao." Do you really think Manny Pacquiao's slow? Do you think Keith Thurman is faster than Manny Pacquiao because of the age factor? You know. They are grandmasters in boxing. Why is Manny Pacquiao being considered by most of a grandmaster in boxing? A lot of people like to call uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. a defensive savant, right? So why, why can't Manny Pacquiao be a grandmaster in boxing, which I consider him a grandmaster in boxing? So this is what, what's going on here. It's no dick riding. It's, a, it's just accomplishments and feats. And, you know, I even had dummies come at me with, with you know, accusations of Pacquiao with the steroids and he's, the, he's you know, his head is big. And I mean, you know, stop it. I mean, do your homework. Asians usually have big skulls. I know this. But let's let's continue. You can Google it if you want to. Oscar De La Hoya never fought again. All right. Facts. This is a big fight. Bombs are being dropped. 
I've waited 22 months to get back in the game. People can say what they want about my injuries. I'm a professional athlete. We have our ups and downs. And obviously, your boy Keith One Time Thurman is back on the rise. I'm here. I'm going to make a big statement. You are not going to want to miss this fight, especially because it's about to be this man's last fight. See, now, many have tried to say that as well, and many have failed. Keith Thurman, if those words were coming from Terrence Crawford, you know, shit, even, even if it was a, a Canelo, if he took on a Canelo challenge, right? You know, credible fighters, fighters that are on a, on a, regardless of the politics, but on a constant basis and, That would be credible there. That would that would rattle us fight fans. That would have us worried for Pacquiao. But there's nothing that Keith Thurman has shown to me as to being a threat for Pacquiao or a fighter at the caliber of Pacquiao, maybe to other fighters in his era, but not not at the, Pacquiao is going, I'm telling you guys, you know, um Adrian Broner of course stuttered. You know, he froze. Regardless of the shit talking and regardless of those that just because they hate Pacquiao, because they try to give Broner a chance because of the skin politics. Regardless of the fact, Adrian Broner got washed. And mark my mark me from here on as well. Do you guys not realize that Manny Pacquiao is the master of taking these young boys O's, bro? Do you not understand this? Go ahead, take take a look at it. Take a look at it. He's been taking O's for the longest now. Algeri, Bradley, I mean, keep going, it keeps going. Yeah, keep going. Manny Pacquiao's taking many O's and straps. And if it wasn't for the Jeff Horn robbery, he probably would have had a constant, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a little undefeated streak going on. But it is what it is. The whole point here is the only ones at 147, and I can't even throw Errol Spence Jr. into the fact because Errol Spence Jr. is doing some stupid, hey, look, the Sean Porter and Errol Spence Jr. fight for, for, for some reason has been pushed. They announced the date or whatever, but I've already said that they were going to push it. They're going to push it again. I'm saying this now. Canelo's going to cock block. They're going to make an Errol Spence Jr. Club. I have said this way before. Those that are waiting for this Errol Spence Jr. Crawford fight, don't wait for it. Errol Spence Jr. is not going to fight Crawford. He's, he's going to move up before he fights Crawford. Trust me when I say this. If they do meet, it'll probably be at 154. You know what I mean? Or 160. It depends. It depends. But I know that Crawford is unifying 147. That's what he's going for. If Manny Pacquiao beats, and th you know this is why I mentioned these guys because they're all into the same puzzle. If Manny Pacquiao beats Keith Thurman, then Manny Pacquiao becomes the regular WBA, and he'll have the the silver W, right? So him and Crawford to get it on, they can possibly try to unify the WBA, the WBO, right? Or, or, or Crawford could do another title defense. Manny Pacquiao could try to do a, a, another PBC unification with Sean Porter, right? Now, this is why we can't speak Errol Spence Jr. and Sean Porter because Canelo's in the picture now. And we also saw what happened with the Rocky Fielding, you know? But otherwise than that, this is all I have to say about that. You know, so Keith Thurman, man, you know, you just got to watch your mouth and understand that, you know, what you're saying is very dangerous and it needs to stop. Just concentrate on your training. Otherwise than that, I'm Jay Cotto, your boy, telling the truth within the sport of boxing, the movie, Star Wars, and life itself. God bless. Stay vigilant. Peace, guys.